Welcome back to the channel. What you're looking at here is the brand new AmazeFit X, which is honestly one of the most interesting and exciting fitness bands I've ever reviewed on this channel, specifically for its massive curved display as we see on the front, but also for many of the other features that this little thing packs in. So unlike almost any other fitness band I've ever reviewed, this has a very, very large display in the front that looks really good, excellent color, excellent pixel density, and it's curved at 92 degrees as you can see there, so you have great viewing angles, and it shows you a lot more information than any other fitness band or even a lot of other watches would show you. And on top of that, this does also have some very impressive sensors on board, so it is packed with a heart rate sensor, GPS, a blood oxygen sensor, a pedometer, and really everything you would need to be tracking your fitness or your sleep on a day-to-day -day basis. So in this video, I'll go through the physical design of this device here, and on top of that, I'll give you a tour of the app on the phone as well as the interface on this device to help you decide if this is something you actually want to consider getting. Now, right off the bat, I will say that this is not actually released yet for consumers to buy. This is an early review unit, which they actually don't even plan to release until about August when they're going to start selling these. So so there are a few features that I'll mention that are not yet implemented on this, and there are a few bugs that are not quite perfect. I'll try to point them out as I go along, but keep that in mind throughout this video. It's really exciting to get our hands on this for a quick early look at this. So let's get into a physical tour of this device, starting off with the elephant in the room, the massive screen right there. So this is a 2.07 inch screen that bends 92 degrees, as you can see right there. Very impressive. It's 202 by 640 pixels, which when you do the math on that, the pixel density of 325 pixels per inch is actually pretty much the same as the iPhone SE. So it's really a great quality screen there. It gets fairly bright, about 400 nits. On the right side, you'll see that we do have a small microphone. And again, one small feature missing right now is the voice assistant. So we will have that eventually. They didn't roll it out with this unit right here yet, but that's why we have the microphone on the side. And then we don't actually have any physical buttons on this. The entire thing, they call it a full metal unibody. So the entire thing is all metal on either side, obviously besides the screen. And so what we have instead is a touch sensitive button right there, which instead of actually being capacitive touch, you have to squeeze this. And I find that you have to squeeze it kind of relatively hard to you know, go to home, turn the screen on, turn the screen off. Uh, but that's really what you'll be doing with those three dots on the right side. That's going to be your home button right there as you squeeze the entire body. Now on the back, you'll see that we do have a couple things going on right here. So we have a heart rate sensor right there, uh, and I'll test out the accuracy in a minute. We also have our blood oxygen sensor in there as well. We have two nodes for charging. It comes with this cool little cradle, which is magnetic, so it has two little nodes in there. You just plop it on there, and it charges. Typically charges in about two hours, but you'll see that on the back, we do also have a button on the strap. We can remove the lower half of the strap. Strangely, they didn't add the same features on the top half of that, so you can't be swapping out both parts of the strap. The bottom is just to change sizes, but the strap is the classic soft rubber feel right there. Um, it actually looks a lot like what we saw on the Galaxy Watch Active 2 and Watch Active 1, where it's like a standard watch and then you kind of tuck the end down inside so it doesn't get caught on anything, it stays there. I think it's a pretty nice strap design. So talking about some of the internals on this watch right here, so it does have Bluetooth to connect to your phone. I don't believe you'll be connecting to earbuds, at least not yet. I'm not seeing any of that on this watch. It also does not have NFC or Wi-Fi, but it does have GPS and so, pretty much all of your connections are going to be through your phone, which is really standard. That's typically what we'll see with smart bands like this, fitness bands, as opposed to a smartwatch. It's one of the big differenti differentiating factors, and you won't be getting any third-party apps on this. And so, actually, speaking of that, let's get into an interface tour right now. All right, so looking at the interface right here, you can see that the home screen we actually cannot change. We should be able to customize that eventually as they have more home screens. But this one on the top, you can see the weather, the time, the date. On the bottom, you have uh, the step count and the date again on the bottom, but you can actually tap on anything here. So if we tap on the steps, it'll open up uh, your goal for the day to see how many steps you have. You can go down and say, get started. Um, and that's really all you'll be seeing there. If we squeeze it to go back to home, as you can see, it's definitely not the easiest to squeeze, as I said before. But if we swipe over from the left, you have kind of a, a quick outline of your day. I really like having this on here. And overall, I really think I like this interface a lot in general. So they show you the weather, your schedule, uh, your target, how well you're doing, your heart rate right there, uh, which is currently a little bit cut off. Uh, then as we swipe over, we can go the other way. And this is where you get all of your widgets. Like I said, no third party apps on this, but it does come with quite a few that we can actually use. So we have workouts on the top. If we go into that, you'll see that there are nine different workouts. So we have swimming, we've got cycling. And if we swipe back, it brings us back to where we just were. You can adjust your target. You can see your heart rate. Didn't mean to do that. You can see your blood oxygen right there. The weather, if we go and tap on that, it'll show us 
uh, today's weather as well as the weekly weather. And I think this is actually especially nice how pretty much everything you want to see is just right there displayed on this fitness band. So not only do they show us the weather on the top, but also humidity, UV rating, the wind, where it's coming from, and the rest of the week. So it uh, looks like I just missed a call right there. Um, and so, okay, so that's good that it tells me I missed a call. Then as we go down, you have alarms, you have settings. Um, and settings, you can't actually do that much on here right now. So you can see that you have a couple settings right there. So as we go down to more, you'll see that we do actually have a music control, a countdown and a stopwatch. And the music control is actually pretty nice because it, while you can't actually download music on here, you won't be able to connect headphones or anything like that. But you can control music on your phone if it's being played. The only other thing you really want to know is that from your home screen, you have some quick access things if you swipe down from the top. So you have uh, you can find your phone, you can turn on a flashlight, you can go to battery mode, you can go to night mode right there. Or if we swipe up from the bottom, this is where your notifications will show up. And so some of this, like I said, is not quite ready yet. But overall, I think this interface, like I said, is really pretty nice. I really like how they set this up. I think that it, it, it looks really nice. It's very easy to use. Actually, let's go through the app right now. And as you can see, just from the home screen right there, it shows you the step count, it shows you the calories and the sleep that you had last night. You can go and check any of those out. Um, as you go down, kind of a quick dashboard here, they can show you more details about those. And on the bottom, you can save some data about uh, maybe like calf circumference, calf circumference, if that's something you're really interested in. Um, but if you tap on the top right little grid thing right there, you can go and check out the data for pretty much anything. If you want to see uh, like your steps, it'll show you the day by day steps, how many calories you burned when you're walking, how long you're walking. They just show you a lot of the information like that. If we go over to your profile, you can see the watch right there. And this is where you can kind of optimize some things on the watch that you don't have access to when you're actually using the watch. So you can find your watch, it'll vibrate. Uh, we can turn on discoverable. You can have uh, activity sharing with your heart rate. You can lift. That's where you have a lift to wake right there. This watch also does have female tracking, which I actually cannot test for you guys for two reasons. One, obviously that I'm not a female and two, they actually didn't roll it out to this device yet. So I can't even show you where you would find that yet. Like I said, I will be releasing an update video for this eventually where I can show you as they start to roll things out more closer to release. So I'll probably make another video in August to show you the latest about this watch. But on top of that, it also does have stress tracking, which again, they have not yet rolled out on this device. Unfortunately, I would like to test that out. Now, talking about the always on display, currently, I don't see one on here. I wish they did have one because it's such a large display. It would be nice to see that. Um, but otherwise, the lift awake feature is very, very sensitive. I find that it every time I lift, it always turns on. Sometimes it turns on a little bit too much if I'm typing on a keyboard. Uh, so I assume they're still probably working on that a little bit. Some of the features that this will add eventually are a voice assistant, which I'm very excited to see. It doesn't have a speaker on here, so you'll just be using the microphone to talk to it. And then it'll probably show you something on the screen, obviously using your phone because Bluetooth is the only connection it has with the outside world pretty much. And other than that, you will have remote camera controls. So now let's get into some of the pros and cons of this device. Starting off with the pros, the first thing is a feature I really like, and I actually forgot to mention it earlier, and this is the pinch to open feature. So all you have to do is pinch the screen and it opens up the app of your choice. I have it set to open up the music controls, and I think it's a really cool way that, you know, especially without any buttons on this watch, I like how you can have other things being controlled with some simple gestures like that. And I really hope by the time they release this, they include a few more gestures. I think it's a really cool concept there. Another big pro is having that really large screen. I think it makes a lot of sense to have a large rectangular screen that wraps around your wrist because your wrist one is curved and two, our language is all linear anyway. So yes, circular watches look good, but a flat circle on your wrist doesn't necessarily make sense when you're trying to display a lot of information. So I think it's a cool concept they have there. Another great thing about this watch is actually the operating system. I think it's really nice how they made their own on here. They didn't use Wear OS or something else because it is just such a different screen and different architecture that it makes sense they would be making something custom for this device. And I think they did a really good job of that. And then the last big benefit from what I can tell right now, if it is actually true, I don't want to speak too soon here, but if this actually does have a seven day battery life, then that would be huge. That would be considering so many smartwatches only have a one to two day battery life. Lasting seven days on this, if you're able to utilize a lot of the functions, is really very impressive. So like I said earlier in the video, and this kind of transitions a little bit into the cons, right now it's kind of a gray area because I haven't been able to test these for you. Um, so, but obviously I will later on in July and August once they get the updates out. But right now, if you decide to go and pre-order yours on Indiegogo, then uh, you just have to kind of do it at your own risk. I don't know how accurate the claims are with the battery life, 
the GPS, the heart rate, the sleep tracking, I don't know any of that yet. I was not able to test these. They told me that the software is not ready yet. So, I mean, they, it does have the features on there as I showed you, but as far as accuracy goes, I just, I'm sorry guys, I couldn't show you in this video. But getting into some of the actual device drawbacks, it's really hard to say right now for the same reason, uh, being that I don't know what is going to be improved with software and how big the improvements are going to be. So really, the only drawbacks I can focus on now are the limitations to the hardware and what they definitely said they will not be including in the final device. So the first limitation, in my opinion, is I mean, the lack of a home button is nice for waterproofing, but one drawback to that is it is kind of hard to pinch the device and you definitely have to apply a significant amount of force there. But some of the other definite drawbacks would be the lack of onboard storage for music and lack of being able to connect Bluetooth headphones to this. So if you're looking to go for a run and leave your phone at home, but you still listen to music, you really can't be doing it with this device. And then another big one is the lack of Wi-Fi and an app market, so you won't be able to use your voice assistant if your phone is not nearby. And on top of that, you also won't be able to get third-party apps or answer phone calls for that matter. So some of the kind of fundamental things that we see in a lot of smartwatches, uh, so it's definitely kind of like the middle child between uh, the Galaxy Watch Active 2, which is a full-blown smartwatch. You can track your health and you know answer phone calls and all that stuff. And then the Mi Band 4, which has a small screen and just does the basics. So this is somewhere in the middle. I think a lot of people would find this very interesting and would definitely enjoy this. And so that leads me into the question of who is this watch for and who is this watch not for? And I think to break it down simply, this watch would be basically for what I just said. Anybody who is looking for just a fundamental watch to track your fitness and have a nice display on there and have a long battery life. I'm really hoping seven days is a true claim. So those three things, that already covers a lot of people that say, you know what, I don't really care. I don't want apps. I don't answer phone calls on my watch. I just want something that I can track my everyday fitness, but has a bigger screen than the Mi Band 4 or the Galaxy Fit. I want something that looks like a smartwatch, but you know, I don't need all the fringe features. Now, who is this watch not for? This is definitely not for anybody that is looking for the cheapest device to track your fitness. In that case, you would be looking at the small fitness bands like the Mi Band or the Galaxy Fit or something like that. And it's also not for people that are looking for a full-blown smartwatch. So as I said before, you're not going to be using NFC or Wi-Fi or uh, LTE. You won't have all those connections on here. And instead, it's just going to be tracking your fitness and getting notifications from your phone. So kind of an interesting combination, a hybrid between the two with a totally new form factor. I think it's a really cool idea. Comment down below and let me know what you guys think of this. Is it something that you find interesting? Do you not really care about it? Let, let me know in the comments down below what your thoughts are on this device. And as always, guys, if you enjoyed this video, please remember to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.